Hello everyone, welcome back to my actual exam series. For those of you who are new here, my name is Siabonga Mukwena and I'm an actual science graduate currently preparing for the A211 financial mathematics exam which I'll be writing in May 2023. In my last video, I talked about my journey and some of the challenges that come with preparing for, for an actual exam. Today I want to dive deep into one of the topics that we'll be covering in A211 syllabus, which is the topic of cash flow models. Cash flow models are an essential part of financial mathematics. They are used to describe financial transactions and help us understand how, how money flows in and out of different investments and financial instruments. In the exam, we will be expected to describe how to use the generalized cash flow model to describe financial transactions. This includes stating the inflows and outflows in each future time period and discussing whether the amount or timing are fixed or uncertain for a given cash flow process. We will also be expected to describe the operation of various financial instruments such as zero coupon bonds, fixed interest securities, index linked securities and annuities, as well as insurance policy contracts like endowments, term assurances and car insurance. Understanding these financial instruments is crucial to passing the exam as well as we will need to be able to apply this knowledge to solve problems and answer questions. As I mentioned in my previous video, preparing for an actual exam while working full-time can be challenging, but I've found that with the right study plan and dedication, it is possible to balance both work and study, and the financial rewards and career opportunities that come with passing an exam make it all worth it. So without wasting any more of your time, let us dive into it. In the actual notes, the chapter of cash flow models is divided into four sections, starting with an introduction section, followed by a cash flow process, cash flow scenarios, and lastly, a section on insurance contracts. So as part of our introduction, let us try to sort of understand what we mean by a cash flow model. In the notes, they define a cash flow model as a mathematical projection of the payments arising from a financial transaction, such as a loan, a share or a capital project. In simple terms, a cash flow model is just a tool used to describe the inflows and outflows of money over time. It can be used to track the flow of money in a business, an investment or any financial transaction. Payments received are referred to as income and are shown as a positive cash flow. Payments made are referred to as outgo and are shown as negative cash flows. The net cash flow at a given point in time is just the difference between income and outgo. Now let's explore the, the various scenarios of cash flows that we may encounter. I'll list each scenario briefly and then explain them in detail a bit later. These scenarios uh, include zero coupon bonds, fixed interest securities, index linked securities, cash on deposit, annuity certain, interest only loans and the payment loans which is also known as mortgages so here is a brief explanation of each of the cash flow scenarios that i mentioned a zero coupon bond is a is a type of financial instrument that promises to pay a predetermined lump sum amount at a specified future date for instance um, an investor may lend four hundred thousand to the issuer of a zero coupon bond in return the investor will receive 500,000 from the issuer in five years time. So this is essentially a loan from the investor to the issuer, which is paid back in a single payment of a fixed amount on a predetermined date, right? So yeah, now let us talk about the fixed interest securities. So when companies or governments need to borrow money, they can issue loans that are listed on the stock exchange. These loans are known as fixed interest securities and are issued in bonds of a certain nominal amount. So with fixed interest securities, the bondholder will receive a specific lump sum on a specified future date, and they will also receive regular interest payments until the lump sum is repaid. These um, interest payments are also called coupons, right? Uh, that is uh, fixed interest securities. Right. The next we have uh, index linked securities. So index linked securities are just different from fixed interest securities because the actual cash amount of interest payment and the financial and the final capital payment are linked to an index that reflects the impact of inflation. 
So unlike fixed interest securities, index-linked securities have a, an initial negative cash flow followed by a series of unknown positive cash flows and a single larger unknown positive cash flow on specified dates. Although the exact amounts of the future cash flows are not known, it is known that they, these amounts will be adjusted for inflation. So, so these cash flows are referred to as known in real terms, right? Because even if we don't know them in advance, we do know that they will be linked to uh, inflation or they will be adjusted for inflation, right? So now moving on to cash on deposit. So this scenario involves an investor depositing cash into a savings account and earning interest on the investment. The investor has the flexibility to withdraw the money at any time. However, the interest end on the investment is subject to change by the investment provider and may vary from day to day. As a result, the timing and amount of the cash flows are uncertain, right? So this scenario can be uh, exemplified by a bank uh, account. So like if you just think of, uh, of your own bank account, you sort of get the idea, right? So let's now discuss equities. Equity shares are securities that are that represent ownership in a company. Unlike fixed interest securities, equity shares do not provide a fixed interest rate. Instead, uh, shareholders are entitled to a share in the company's profits based on the number of shares that they own. These profits are distributed to shareholders in the form of regular dividend payments, right? So since dividend payments depend on the company's profit, they are variable and are not known in advance, right? Because it's not guaranteed that like the company will always make profit and we cannot tell way in advance how much profit the company will make. So the dividend payments will be will vary depending on the profit that the company has made, right? So next up we have annuities, right? An annuity certain is a financial product that provides a series of regular payments to the investor in exchange for a single premium paid upfront. The duration of the annuity payments and the frequency of the payments are predetermined. The, the payments may be fixed or variable depending on the terms of the annuity contract. Um, variable payment options may be based on factors like inflation or interest rates, right? So with annuity certain, we know in, at the beginning of the contract or we know in advance how much will be paid out to the investor um, and also for how long. We know that the term is fixed and also the payment amounts are, are fixed, right? Um, now looking at the interest-only loans and repayment loans, an interest-only loan is a type of loan where only the interest is, is repaid during the loan term, right? With the initial borrowed amount paid at the end, right? So the, the interest rate on such loan may be fixed or variable resulting in, unsa in uns uncertain regular regular payments. So with interest only loan, we're just paying the interest that is owed on the outstanding amount. And the, the amount of interest that we pay will obviously be uh, dependent on the, the interest rate at the time, which uh, we cannot know in advance. So the payment amount is uncertain, okay? So now with the repayment loan, it's also <clears throat> referred to as a, a mortgage. So a repayment loan requires regular payments that include both interest and a portion of the, the borrowed amount that we can call the loan capital. So the interest rate and the payment amounts are typically fixed, making the cash flows known and predictable. So with a, a repayment loan or a mortgage, we have a fixed installment that we use to pay the loan with each fixed uh, with each of that fixed uh, installment it will be divided into interest payment and capital repayment so depending on how much money is outstanding at a given point in time the interest payment portion will differ and also the capital uh, payment portion will differ so as we progress uh, throughout the term of the loan the interest portion and the capital portion will differ but then the monthly installment will be fixed. So we will know in advance how much we'll be paying each and every month for the duration of the loan, right? So yeah, that is a repayment loan or mortgage. 
So now we can look into insurance policy contracts, right? So we have insurance policy contracts. Uh, the first one being a pure endowment policy. So a pure endowment policy is a policy that pays a lump sum amount upon survival to the end of a specified term and it requires uh, regular premium payments, right? And then we, we also have an endowment assurance. So an, an endowment assurance is similar to a pure endowment, but it, it, it also pays a lump sum benefit on debt before the end of the term, okay? And then we also have term assurance policy, which provides a lump sum benefit upon debt before the end of a specified term. And it also requires regular premium payments. Okay, and then we also have a contingent annuity, which is a contract similar to an annuity setting, but the, the payments are contingent upon certain events, um, such as survival, which makes the payment term for the regular cash flows uncertain. Okay, and then now moving on to general insurance contracts. We have car insurance, right? So a car insurance policy provides cover for, for damages to the insured vehicle, fire or theft of the vehicle. So these now are, you can uh, call them property cover. So damages to the insured vehicle due to fire, theft or whatever else, we it's, it's property cover. And they may also be uh, liability cover, right? So that one will be a compensation payable to third parties for dead injury or damage to their property uh, that is caused by the insured vehicle. So that one is liability cover. So with car insurance, we have property cover and liability cover. So typically car, a car insurance contract will last for one year and a premium is paid for the cover to be, provide, to be provided. All right, we saw we, with general insurance contracts, we also have uh, a cash plan, a health cash plan. So a health cash plan is a health insurance policy that lasts for one year and provides benefits that may include hospital treatment, either paid for in full or in part, um, such as a, a fixed sum per day spent in hospital uh, as an inpatient in return for a premium, right? So with insurance contracts, we won't like dive too much into them because they are covered in detail in subject A213. Okay. All right, so we have come to the end of our our video. I hope this brief overview overview of the cash flow models has been helpful to you. So in my upcoming videos, <clears throat> I'll be diving even deeper into the H11 syllabus covering topics like uh, the principles of actuarial modeling, interest rate theory, um, loan repayments, uh, equations of value, uh, and others. Right. So, yeah. If you do enjoy, if you enjoyed this video uh, and found it helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you are currently studying for an actuarial exam, I wish you all the best of luck on your journey. Um, yeah, I hope it all goes well. Thank you for watching. Um, I'll see you in the next video.